Jennifer of Celtic Knot Crochet and today in this video we'll be making the Celtic Crochet Scrubby. This is a simple pattern, easy enough for beginners. I'll show you all the simple basic stitches and how to weave the Celtic Knot and put it all together. If you like this tutorial, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and don't forget to click to subscribe so you can see more Celtic Knot and crochet tutorials like this one. Let's get started. Before we get started, let's go over the supplies you'll need for this Celtic Crochet Scrubby. I used three different colors of Yarn Bee's Scrubology Scrub It. You can find this at Hobby Lobby or you can click on the link in the description below and buy it online. I use colors orange, green, and white. This is a great yarn for making the scrubbies because it does not hurt your hands at all when you're working with it. It is a little thick, so working with thicker yarn, if that's hard for you, you might need to take a few breaks. But as far as the scratchiness of it, it is not at all. It's nice and thick, so these types of projects work up really fast. I also use a size J six millimeter crochet hook and I also used a jumbo tapestry needle. Remember all the supplies are linked in the description below. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to create a cord out of the green yarn and a cord out of the orange yarn. Then we're going to weave a Celtic knot and then edge it with the white and then we're also going to add this circle to the back to give it a little more stability since you'll be using it to scrub dishes and these work great they are soft and gentle on your dishes but they get the grime off of there so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make this cord for the orange You'll want to put your slip knot on your hook. And you want to chain 22. So that's 20 and two more. Now you're going to work in the back bar of this chain. So here you see the front of the chain with the V's and the back has a whole bunch of bumps. I do this technique several times and have a separate video just for this if you click right here. We're going to skip the first chain. Here's that first chain. See it right here. We're going to skip that and we're going to work right into the next chain. So here's my first chain. There's my loop on my hook. My first chain, we're going to skip the first one and start working into the next one. So you see the first bump right here, we're going to work into that second bump or the back bar of the chain. Put my hook in, yarn over, pull up a loop, two loops on my hook, yarn over, pull through two. And that is a single crochet and we're going to work that into each stitch all the way down the chain. You can hear that this yarn is a little noisy because it has that polyester part to it. But again, it does not irritate my hands at all. And I love how it's thick, so it goes fast. And that's what it would look like when you're finished. And just to give you a rough estimate so you know approximately how long it should be, it should be about eight inches, seven and a half inches long, this orange piece. Cut the yarn with a good sized tail for sewing it together later. And there we go, that's piece one of our Celtic Crochet Scrubby. Now we're going to make the green cord. 
You'll want to start that this one in the same manner, putting your slip knot on your hook. Okay, and now we're going to chain 43. So I like to chain by tens. So in my head I was counting by ten four times. And then three more. And now same thing, we're going to work into that back bar. So here's the front of the chain. We're going to turn it over and we're going to work into this back bar of the chain. So the first thing we're going to do just like with the orange piece, we're going to skip the first chain and we're going to start in the second chain. And we're going to put a single crochet in there. And we're going to single crochet in the next six chains. So that's one, two, three, four, five, And by crocheting in that back bar, we get the top and the bottom of this crocheted piece to look the same. Next, we're going to start making these points. So we have three points here in the triquetra or the trinity knot. So we need to make three points as we work on this cord. So to make the first point, we're going to single crochet in the next stitch, chain two, and then single crochet right in that same stitch. See where it is? We're going to go right into that same stitch we went before with another single crochet. And see how that creates a pointed shape. Now we're going to work across to our next point. So we're going to single crochet in the next 13 chains. Still working in that back bar of the chain, or the back bump, however you like to call it. So now I've gone 13 single crochets, and I'm going to put another point in the next stitch. So I'm going to single crochet, chain two, and then right back in that same bump of the chain, do another single crochet. And by cramming all that in to one stitch, it gives me that nice pointed part of the cord. Now I'm going to work to my third point. So, so far my cord looks like this. Here's the beginning, first point, second point. So now I'm going to single crochet in the next 13 chains. Still working in that back bump of the chain. Okay, so that's another 13 single crochets. Now I'll do the last point in the next chain. Single crochet, chain two, and single crochet. See, that's where the single crochet was, and I'm going to go into that same exact chain as before. And there's my third point, and now I'm going to single crochet in the remaining stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six. So if you were to look at your cord, we can cut a nice maybe 12 inch length so we have plenty to sew it up once we've woven it into the Celtic knot. But this is what your cord will look like. So you can see it kind of wants to turn itself into a Trinity knot without too much work there. So we began here, and if it would help you, you can put some kind of marker where you began, uh, because you'll need to know which cord end you started at so you can weave it. 
Another way to notice is this is the end without the yarn tails. So the yarn tails are at the end of this cord and we're not going to start weaving with this side. We're going to start weaving with this side. And to measure it, let's see how long. So we have about three inches there. Curl it around to about seven and a half and keep going to here where we have 12 and a half and we rotate it there and go to so it's about 15 and a half how long this cord would be so the next step is we're going to use our Celtic knot diagram and weave the knot and sew it all together. So what you need to do is print out the Celtic Knot diagram that you'll find at CelticKnotCrochet.com. It's a free PDF for you there. And you'll also notice that I have two diagrams, one for right-handers and one for left-handers. You're going to follow the same directions, the same process, whether you're right or left-handed, you just need to use a different diagram. So the one that's labeled for left-handers, there is a circle here. So you'll know if you're using the correct diagram because the one for left-handers has the circle here with a nice label. And it is the same diagram, just flipped, because you crochet in the opposite direction of someone who's right-handed, so your cords would come out a little different. So this diagram is so you can be successful and still have a pretty Celtic knot scrubby at the end. Now, whenever you print out a Celtic knot diagram from my website, you want to take a few minutes to familiarize yourself with the cords and the different markings on the diagram so you know what's up and can do a really good job of weaving the Celtic knot. So you look here and you'll see that each point of the cord lines up with A, B, and C, and you'll see that in the written directions at CelticKnotCrochet.com and as you work you come across and make point A then this is point B and this is C and these will line up when we start weaving. You'll also see that there are arrows showing you which way to weave the cords then you'll see a black asterisk here and a black circle and then this arrow here. So when we are working this project, we're going to start with the green cord and we're going to start at that black asterisk. And do you see how there's some dotted green lines here and there's some dotted orange lines here? They might be a little hard to see. That just shows you that the cords will be hidden underneath the other cord. So the cord ends because right now we have two ends, but they are going to meet up right under here and be hidden, so it looks like it's one continuous cord. Um, so I like to encourage people to put their finger where we're gonna start weaving and to just follow along the cord with your finger so your brain has a chance to process which way things are going. And then do that again for the orange cord. The orange cord starts at the black circle and you would just go around. But as you can see, you have an overpass, then an under, then over, then under, then over, and under to meet back up. Now in order to weave the knot, I like to use a cork board. It's uh, about a quarter inch thick and then I also like to put a piece of about half inch thick styrofoam underneath that but you don't need to do that. And again you'll need the diagram and then you'll want to use some straight sewing pins. Again all the supplies are listed in the description below with links to where you can purchase them and then you'll need the cords that you just crocheted. So we're going to start with the green cord 
And this is the end of the green cord with the yarn tails. And we're going to start weaving on the opposite end without any yarn tails. So that's the beginning of the cord. And we're going to place the beginning right here where the asterisk is. And we're going to use these pins because they're going to help hold everything in place. And we're going to follow the green cord with the direction of the arrows. And I like to pin at all the points. It's like having an extra hand when you use the pins. Now I'm going to follow the green path and I'm going to follow it around like this to point B. I just lay the cord on top and I'm removing the pin because I'm passing over the beginning of the cord to hide it. And then I can put the cord back in and here we go. Point B meets up with point B. And I'll put a pin right in there. This is a very simple knot to weave. You will head up this way and if you peek at the diagram you can see that you have to go under right here. But then if we peek again, see how it's going over? So we're going to need to go under this one and over this one. So go up through the center, like so. And there we go. And then we pass up this way and meet up with point C. like so. And then we're going to meet up with where we began. So you can see here, here's the beginning of the cord and here's the end of the cord and we're going to sew those two together. But for now I'm going to put the pins right in there. So there you have the first part of the Celtic Knot Scrubby with the Trinity Knot all woven together. And you can see how by putting those chain two spaces here, you created a nice point and the knot kind of just pops into shape. Now I'm going to take the orange cord and follow the orange path. Remember, the orange cord is starting right here underneath this green cord. And same as before, we're going to start with the end that does not have any yarn tails. And you can see that the piece, the crochet cord, naturally turns in that direction. And that will help us uh, with weaving this. So if you go to use the wrong side, you'll see that it's just not bending in that same direction. So you want to go with the natural curve of the stitches and I'll sneak it under there like so and put a pin right there. And now I'm going to weave according to the path of the orange cord. So here is an over and then I can peek under here and I know I'm going to go under. So over, then under. And for this whole section of the knot, that's what we're going to do. We're going to go over, under, over, under, over, under. So next is over. We're alternating and then under here. And then the last section right here, over and then under to meet up with where I began. And there you go. So now that the knot is woven, we can uh, sew the cord ends and then put the edging on the outside. If you look at the finished one, we have one more step 
of adding the edging and then adding the back circle to add some stability. So what I like to do at this point is I take the pins and I pin across in a few spots. This is a small knot and simple to keep in its spot. But I do that in a few places just so when I pick it up it doesn't unweave on me like so. Take the other pins out and now I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to use these yarn tails to sew the ends of the cord together. So I like to use this jumbo tapestry needle here. And I'm going to line the cord ends up just like so. See how they match up? And I'll go down and through one side of the cord and then back up through the other side. And that pulls the ends together. And I'll use both ends like so. And I'll do the same thing for the green cord. You can see here, those are the two ends. And I'll sew those together and then I'll be ready to add the edging. Now it turns out that once you've sewn your cord ends together, your scrubby will work best if you sew this center section all together. So I'm going to use the yarn tails and I'm going to grab a loop of a stitch on one section of the cord and sew it to the next section of the cord. And I'll do that maybe two stitches per side of the cord. And I found that once you start using your scrubby, uh, the yarn has a lot of stretch in it. And these sections work better if they're sewn together so you have one solid piece here in the center of the scrubby. So on the other side, these here, they won't lift up and come out like that. They'll all be nice and anchored together. So I highly recommend that. Again, you don't have to, uh, but if you're giving this as a gift and you know the person's going to use it every day to scrub their dishes, you'll want to secure this center section. And then you can even uh, work these two tails towards each other and then tie them in a nice knot, a double knot. And then this will be hidden by that back circle and you won't even see the knot. So that's what I would do. I always try to tie my yarn tails into a knot if I have more than one. Just helps the project not come apart when it's being used, especially this is something that's going to be used and put in the washer. So these are pretty close to each other like this and then I tie a nice double knot nice and tight and then I'd weave these ends in, hide them right here, hide them right here, and trim the excess. And I'd also bring these ends, I'd tie these ends together in the same way, nice and tight, double knot, and then weave these in towards the center. And then that back circle is going to cover all of that and help keep those ends from coming out and give it some stability. To make the circle that adds some stability on the back of our scrubby, we're going to use the white. Of course, you can use whichever color you like, but I chose to use the white. And you'll put your slip knot on your hook and chain four. And now we're going to do a whole bunch of stitches in that very first chain we made. We're going to do 11 double crochets. So I yarned over, put my hook in, yarn over, pull through the chain then yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. 
I'm going to do that 10 more times. Yarn over, hook in, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And I'll keep going and by cramming all these stitches in that one little chain creates a circle without even trying. And I just have to see how I pull them over to make room and then I'm going to slip stitch right in the top of that starting chain three, put my hook in, yarn over, pull through everything. And that's the first round completed already. Now I'm going to chain two and I'm going to work half double crochets. So I'm going to do another half double crochet where that chain top is. And now I'm going to do two half double crochets in each stitch around. So I'll show you the half double again. You yarn over, put your hook into the stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through all three. And I'll do two of those in every stitch. Yarn over, put my hook in, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through all three. Now if you'd like, there's a little technique where you can eliminate some of this big hole here that is created by two stitches in one stitch. And you can do that by going through the back loop only for the first stitch. And then you can go under both loops for the second stitch. And you could see the difference here. This is a big hole and this is a smaller hole. Totally up to you. So back through the back loop and then through under both loops as usual. It just helps spread out some of the extra bulk. And again, this is for the back of our project. So it's not the decorative part. It's just there to help uh, have more sturdiness to it. So it doesn't really matter what it looks like as long as your scrubby does its job on the back. <laughs> so as I said before, working with thicker yarn can just tire your hands out more. So if you need to take a break, go ahead and take a break in between each piece of this project, um, just so your hands don't get overtired. And as you can see, it works up really fast. So let me back up. This is the beginning chain two. I'm going to put my hook in, yarn over, pull through everything to close up my circle. And as you can see, that circle fits nicely right on the back of my scrubby. So it ends up being about the same size as the orange circle. And again, you can do whichever color you like on the back. And then I'm going to leave a good size yarn tail, maybe two feet on this one, because I'm going to use this yarn tail to secure this circle to the back. So one less yarn tail I have to weave in, I'm going to use it to help join everything together. Now before we start, we want to look at our diagram one more time and where this arrow points to, that is where you're going to start doing the edging. And again, if you're using the left-hander diagram, your arrow will still be pointing to the same spot. It's just flipped over to here. And as you can see, I just did a very simple edging around the knot. Again, it helps hold it in its place and frames it nicely so the design pops. So if we look on our actual project, right here is where we're going to start doing the edging. And we're going to start on the orange cord. So since I'm right-handed, I'm going to flip it upside down and I'm going to grab my crochet hook and put the slip knot on my yarn and I'm going to work in these three stitches right here that you can see of the orange cord but I am not going to work in the usual spots so normally we put our hook under these two loops like so of a stitch but I would like those loops to 
not be interrupted and to not be worked into. And I'm going to pick the loop on the back of the stitch. So you could call it the back bar of the single crochet. So each single crochet has one of these bumps right below the top loops here of the stitch. So I'll show you again. This is the regular loops of the single crochet that we would work under. Just tilt your work a little bit towards you and you'll see those bumps. The single crochet back bump. And we're going to put our hook in those. And you can even see them here on the green cord. And when we get to the points, those are chains. We're going to work in the back bar of the chain as well. And that way, you'll see as I do it, this nice edging of the cord stays intact. So we're going to join with a single crochet, which means you put your slip knot on your hook, insert your hook into the stitch, then you're going to just complete a single crochet as usual. Yarn over, pull through the stitch, two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two. And that's joining with a single crochet. Now we're going to work in that back bump of the single crochet, but we're also going to do two single crochets in this stitch. One, two, and then we're going to do two in the next one. One, two, and that's it. And see how now we have that edge of the cord is still intact and there aren't any stitches going into it, so it gives it a nice clean look. Now you want to be looking at the green cord. If you look carefully right at the point, you have those two chains, see here and here, and then you're going to start three stitches away from those two chains. So one, two, three. And we're going to turn the work, insert through that back bump of the single crochet, and do another single crochet in each of the next three. One, two, three. Now we're at those two chains from the point and we're going to work in the back bar of the chain, or the back bump, one, and then we're going to chain two, and then we're going to work in that next chain of the chain two space. And that helps keep that nice point. Now we're going to do a single crochet in each of the next three stitches. Again, working on the back in that back bump, one, two, three. So we've worked around here, gone up and down, and now we're going to do the same thing two more times. We have orange stitches, stitches on the green, orange stitches on the green, and that will bring us right back to where we started. So we have the next one, two, three on the orange. Put our hook into the back bump and do one single crochet there. Then do two in the next, one, two, and two in the one after that, one, two. By adding some stitches, that helps that curve to stay nice. And then remember, here we have the point with the two chains right here from the chain two space, and we're going to work three away from that, one, two, three, and put our hook into the back, and into the back, and into the back. So that's one, two, three, and then at the point, we put a single crochet in that first chain, chain two, and then a single crochet in the second chain. And now we single crochet in each of the next three. 
Oops. One. Two. And three. Oop. You can see by adding this edging, it actually helps lock the knot in place so we don't have to sew any of these parts of the knot. You can if you'd like, it just takes more time and I like to finish my project. So I'll repeat that one more time and then I'll show you how I finish off this last part. Here you can see I've gone all the way around with my single crochet edging and then here I am at the last single crochet after I did three here on the green cord and I'm going to pull this through after I've cut it. I don't normally end that way, but I think it looks nicest. And I'm going to take my jumbo tapestry needle and I'm going to feed the yarn through that first single crochet by going under both of the loops, like so, and then bring it back through the last one that I just made by going under both of those loops. And then I'm going to go down through the bottom of that last single crochet. And that makes for a much nicer join, as you can see. And you almost can't even tell where I stopped and where I started. And then these two yarn tails on the back, I would tie in a nice double knot because you're going to be using this in the kitchen, scrubbing with it, and then tossing it in the wash to clean it. And you really don't want any of these yarn tails to come out and have your project come undone. Now we're ready to do the last step of this project is add this white circle to the back. So here's the right side of the circle we made earlier. And I have a nice long yarn tail that I'm going to put onto my tapestry needle and I'm going to turn over the knot motif and I'm going to place the wrong side of the circle onto the center of the wrong side of the knot and I'm going to whip stitch this onto the back. Now if you want you could do this in green or you could do orange or a completely different color and what I'm doing is I'm putting my needle through at least the back loop of the orange cord and even that back bump and then I'm going to go under both loops of the stitch on the edge of the circle. And I'm going around and I'm just going to pick up stitches like so so it's nice and secure. So the back loop of the orange cord and then both loops on the circle. And then when I get to the green cord, same thing, just pick up a loop on the back, making sure my stitches don't go through to the front and you can't see them. And I would continue like that around the circle and weave in my ends. And you'll have something that looks like this. And it's nice and thick and sturdy. And then I was thinking these points are good for getting into nooks and crannies when you're cleaning. And then you can set this on the side of your sink and have a nice little Celtic knot decoration that can also be used to clean your dishes. Yay! So I hope you enjoyed making this project. I love how this turned out. It's so quick and easy to make. This yarn is very nice on your hands. It doesn't scratch. And you could make the same project just with some regular bulky yarn that's soft and you would have a nice Celtic knot motif that you wouldn't use for scrubbing dishes, but you could uh, applique onto another project. So thanks again for watching. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up and click to subscribe. 
and stay tuned for the next Celtic Knot tutorial. Happy crocheting!